I don't think there's any doubt that the winner of the Civil War football game has, in the felicitous phrase of the late, great pumpkin, DeAndros, who declared, this game is for the right to live in the state, but the right to live happily, contentedly in the state, that does seem to be on the line for the winner or loser, because if you win the Civil War, whatever fan base you're involved with, these games, win or lose, on both sides mean a lot to the celebrated figures in both schools' football history. And, you know, I'm looking forward to see who has that, who's ever going to win the 2018 Civil War. It's going to make the season something special for the winner. Yeah, I think you need to be you need to be here to experience it. And so growing up in Southern California, uh, going through that first year as a redshirt even, but then seeing how, you know, the state you're either a beef or you're a duck and how much it, it's all over, you know, restaurants and within the community and talked about got a great respect for what that passion and rivalry is. I think it's really healthy and good for college football and healthy for this state and uh, uh, growing up as a kid, the Civil War game, you know, that was that was the day each year where you had the right to, to to live in the state of Oregon for the rest of the year, you know, Civil War, Beavers, Ducks. Um, you know, it, it didn't matter what the records were, it didn't matter anything, it's just it's the right to uh, to own the state. To me, it's all about bragging rights. Uh, I mean, if you win that game, you got 365 days to talk about that game. Uh, everybody talks about it. Uh, being so close, it, it makes it a, a good rivalry. Uh, it's only 45 minutes away. So I think it's all about bragging rights and you know, coming from LA, I was all about the all about the gauntlet with uh, UCLA and USC didn't know much about this. And then I saw the tension the first time my teammates saw their teammates kind of outside of the football realm. And um, that's when I knew it was it was a serious uh, rivalry. It was it was serious business. <laughs> Lucas has some time to throw, and it's intercepted by Doggett down the left sideline. He's at the 10, at the 5, and he is in! Touchdown, Beaver! The 98 game was the best game I've seen in the series. I sneaked into the student section to watch it, watch the students rush the field not once but twice and ring the field as the game was ending and watch this quarterback that I had no idea the following year I'd be calling Jonathan Smith's game in the Civil War down in Eugene in 99. You know, I say one game can change um, a season and one season can change a program. Um, and that game was it. We won that game. Uh, from there on, we spring, springboard into a winning season next year. So 98, uh, maybe my favorite memory is obviously the, the crowd coming on the field after, and then even having to be backed up, and then we go to overtime, and there, there's thousands of people on the sideline against the wall. That was a unique memory. You can still remember handing the ball off to Ken Simonton win, to win the game. What a game. And then 2000, I remember uh, kind of the pageantry, Keith Jackson. The quarterback for Oregon State, Jonathan Smith, the walk-on, red-shirted, worked his way off the scout team. It was beautiful out, the sun was out, you know, huge, huge game to go to, uh, you know, keep the Ducks from going to the Rose Bowl, but then win the championship for ourselves. Jonathan Smith throws two early touchdowns to Robert Prescott. The Beavers build a 14-0 lead on a day where the Rose Bowl was still in play, a share of the Pac-10 championship in play. 
to see Jake Cookus get three picks, to see the Beavers turn Oregon over six times in the game. The honor to call a game like that in the history of Oregon State football, without question, 2000 is the most satisfying game I've ever seen, even if it fell a little bit short of the dramatics, which I didn't have the honor of calling in 98. I can remember taking a knee at when we won the game, the final snap, and, and the crowd rushing the field. The students racing out into the stadium, and they have just swallowed the field. You know, my favorite memory um, was probably watching Sports Center the whole year and having all the sportscasters, sports announcers talk about how loud that stadium is, how loud Austin is. They used to have the, the decibel thing. Um, when you would watch the game and they would talk about it was the loudest stadium and we would talk to each other our teammates and we'd be like that's that's not gonna happen when they play us here's Roper Stewart and Stewart didn't and get stop it. ball game over the Beavers have beaten the Ducks for the first time here at Autzen Stadium since 1993 and going into that stadium and being there at the end of the game and just hearing it silent was probably the best feeling uh, of my time. Senior year, we actually beat them in Autzen, which broke the home-to-home -home streak. And that was awesome. Uh, Dorian Smith getting the tackle in the end and just us rushing the field. That was a great feeling to, to go out on top like that as a senior. And the fans are rushing the field. It feels like old times. Oh, it gets so, it changes so much. Uh, it gets so loud. Uh, everybody's coming in from Portland to Eugene, uh, Roseburg, Albany. Uh, it's a different atmosphere. It, it makes me, when I, when I grew up uh, watching Texas and uh, Oklahoma, the Red River White rivalry, it reminds me of games like that. It, it's going to be awesome. You know, Reese will be rocking. I mean, everybody uh, is going to be here. We'll have that thing full. You know, we'll have, um, it'll just be a great experience. Loud, you know, hopefully it'll be nice and cold and wet. Well, Civil War usually brings that out of Reese um, because of all the the rivalry to it and the pageantry of the game.